But how does MADVERC relate to the Worker Co-op Solidarity Fund? Yeah, so it's interesting because I think it's easy when there is an organization involved in an initiative for it to seem like it's that organization's initiative. Um, and the Worker Co-op Solidarity Fund is definitely not MADWORK's initiative. Mm -hmm. I want to be really clear about that because I think it's really important to give credit to the people who are involved. And it's not, it's not a MADWORK project. Um, MADWORK is like one of the organizations that has one or two people going to the meetings. But mm -hmm. um, I would say the MADWORK involvement really is that um, the idea was largely inspired by um, someone at one of our regional rendezvous. Um, who came from the UK. Well, it was one of the virtual ones. Um, so came from the UK, but not like particularly far. I think they were in their bedroom. Um, <laughs> and they were talking about, there's a fund in the UK called Solid Fund, um, which is, I guess we've been saying a dollar a week. I guess it's probably like a pound per week um, and not a dollar per week, but um, they haven't corrected me when I've said a dollar per week. <laughs> so, um, but their fund is basically um, worker owners, um, through co-ops put in a dollar a week per worker. Um, everyone whose co-op puts in money on, everyone who's, yeah, everyone whose co-op puts in money on behalf of them is a member. Um, so like if your co-op has 10 people and you put in $10 a week, all 10 of your worker owners are members of Solid Fund. Um, and then they use an online platform. I think it's Lumio, but it might be something different um, to make decisions about how to grant out that funding. Sure. Um, and so that funding goes out to co-ops um, and it just sort of replenishes itself on a weekly basis. Um, but all of the decisions, it sounds like not everyone gets involved um, in the decision-making process, but everyone who has money, who's contributing to the fund does have decision-making power in it, which is pretty cool. Um, and the idea I think is that it's funding that is not, um, and for one thing, it's not loans, it's just like outright funding. Um, and for another thing, it's democratically decided by other worker owners. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to try to convince like a grant committee that's never heard of a worker co-op about why your project is worthy. Um, you're talking to other people who are familiar with co-ops, quite likely familiar with your co-op um, and know what kinds of questions to ask or what kinds of things to think about in terms of like how funding might really make a difference for a particular co-op. Um, and so we've been, there's been a group of us meeting in the US, mostly in the Midwest, although we've we sort of started with like, what's our geographic scope? And then we were like, what about the Midwest? Hmm. But then as we've added more people, most of them aren't in the Midwest. So, you know, whatever. Um, but there's been a group of us meeting for the last like little more than a year now, um, trying to figure out how to start something like that here. Hmm. Um, and we've really been trying to figure out, um, do we want to do non-extractive loans or do we want to do grants? And we've also been trying to figure out how to make sure worker owners inv are involved in that decision. Um, some of us who were involved in the beginning, um, are not worker owners. Like some people were, but some people aren't. Um, and so I think there's been a really strong desire to make sure that since worker owners would be the primary people donating to the fund, that we have worker owner interest in creating the fund and making sure that the fund works the way that the people who would be putting in the money would want it to go. Um, so we've definitely made a lot of progress on that recently, I would say. Um, a couple of the folks who've been coming to meetings now who hadn't been coming before um, are worker owners. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's definitely something that like is in the spirit of things that med work likes supporting, right? Of like yeah. things that help co-ops, but that help co-ops through cooperation and not through like a top-down like approach of, you know, telling people what they should do with the money or um, controlling what the funds are used for. Um, and I think one of the things that's really cool about it is that like, it's not a huge amount of money, but if we have a lot of people putting in money, it would build up quickly. Um, yeah. So it's not unreasonable, I think, for a lot of cops to think about putting in a dollar per worker per week. But if we had hundreds of co-ops doing that, that becomes a lot of funding really quickly. Um, mm -hmm. 
And also there's a lot of times when co-ops need funds that aren't necessarily huge funds, um, but it's still funds, you know, like it might be too much hassle to like go through a loan process for like $800. But sometimes that $800 makes a really big difference mm. in fixing equipment or floating through a really rough month or things like that. So um, I don't know, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I'm just hoping we can like get more people involved in the planning so that we can have more buy-in when we start collecting funds. Anything you want to add about that, Chris? Because you've also been at those meetings. Yeah. Um, I, re I really like how people coming in from abroad uh, enriching the, the experiences and the connections and the possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's something that I've seen in, in the Solidarity Fund. Uh, it's really cool. It's, it's, it's attractive people who didn't, uh, who wanted to talk about this but they didn't quite have the space to. Um, and it just, it just points, it just reminds me of the importance of holding space for things. You know, but if, if, if people, if, 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 if someone can't do like this big old thing, just helping to hold space is really critical. Yeah. And, you know, and that's kind of what regional, well, that's what regional rendezvous did too. They held the space and then you have people coming in with, uh, all sorts of positive initiatives that communities really need. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's one real cool thing that I've seen about the Worker Co-op Solidarity Fund um, and seeing people come in who aren't in the Midwest, mm -hmm. uh, but they don't have anybody else to talk to about this stuff. And they're really involved uh, in, in building uh, workers, workers' power, stuff like that. So I, I really like the space for, that's one of the reasons why I really like that space um, but also, it, it it was just making me think about how um, in in Chicago uh, we recently the, the closest thing that we have to is, this is going back to the previous conversation about mad work. Um, the closest thing we have to that is something called the Chicago Co-op Convergence, and recently we was it last month or two months ago we met for the first time. Uh, because it's it started during the pandemic, and it was so it was so great to kind of like go out of structure, go out outside of a, like a the the kind of like formal structure, like the formal container, and the conversations that happened from that were like really really important. Um, and I don't know, I guess that's a, a theme that I've been thinking about lately. And things is that um, you know just having room for flexibility, kind of working outside of containers is kind of really important for uh, people to find like their passions, identify critical needs and um, you know, critical enthusiasms too. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're gonna, there's there's a listserv for the Worker Co-op Solidarity Fund and we're gonna put a link to it in the YouTube description for anybody who wants to get involved and yeah, I, ideally, we're, we're definitely trying to attract more worker owners. Um, and if you don't have anybody, if someone wants to get involved, they don't have anybody with whom to talk about this stuff. I think this is a space, for, it's, it's becoming a space for that as well, um, which I, I personally welcome to help people nucleate, um, to build the effort uh, in, in their locality or region where such a thing doesn't exist yet. That's all I got for now. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a really good point about um, people coming in from areas that don't have things like that, because I think that is one of the things when we decided to focus on the Midwest, we also said like that while we may not have the capacity to be national yet, we want to support other smaller regional groups in doing similar things with the idea of sort of maybe building all together. Um, so yeah, I think it again is sort of that like it's cooperation among cooperatives, like as we build it, you know, it's not like it's not like we can be like, oh, here's how to do it. It's more like, come help us figure it out and we'll help you figure it out. 